to our Facebook page and leave us a message. Now, when we were in Hawaii recently, you caught up, Barry, with a world famous craftsman. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're in Hawaii and that's where the art of surfing started. But it's also a place where one of the greatest craftsmen that have ever made a surfboard lives. I got to visit him. It was amazing. Well, you know it's design, that's my passion. But what I want to see today is how you design and make a surfboard. And to do that, I'm going to meet one of the best surfboard shapers on earth. For over 50 years, Pat has designed surfboards for some of the world's best surfers. And he specialises in big wave boards, known as guns. I'm so excited to be here. So talk to me, what has got Pat Rawson to the North Shore of Hawaii? Uh, so, yeah, back in the day, let's just say 1972, I came from Los Angeles, where I was from, as a board builder to go to school here to Hawaii. And you saw that the North Shore or Hawaii was the place to... It was a spot. It is one of the meccas of the best surf it is. Uh, to come. And of course, to be able to be a board builder on the North Shore and work with different people like I did, Dick Brewer, some others. Amazing Jerry Lopez. guys. Yeah, I mean, it's why I'm so passionate. I'm loving the look and the lines of these boards, but just talk me through who would be riding this board as opposed to something like this. Okay, well, let's go with the big one. This is a big board, um, a gun for 25 to 30 foot waves. So this oh, was designed wow. for uh, Nazare, Portugal, which is a really big, big wave. wave. Compared to a board like this, which is a small wave board design. And, um, you know, it's, it's with colored resin and glass on twin fin. This is a yeah. fish design. I do quite a few of these as well. And this is what your regular surfer at sort of Bondi, DY, Monovo will be yeah, surfing they're on. they're riding heaps of these. Now. But this big gun uh, is more your giant waves I like the North 15, Shore. Yeah. 15 of those a year, this type of board with this yeah. construction. Pat only makes custom boards, shaping them specifically for each surfer. These two timber boards caught my eye as soon as I walked in. These are Lamborghinis. This, yeah. this redwood is 6,000 years old. It's a beautiful board. That's got my so name they're, written they're all over it, that one. We did make one like this for Tom Carroll because oh, this wow. is the Tom Carroll 1991 replica snapback board. Yeah, well that's Real the big famous. board. That's the board that he says changed his career. Well, I think he helped change my career with that too. <laughs> we kind of like, we work together. Yeah, so this is my workshop here. You made a lot of boards in here, I imagine. I have about 25,000 maybe. Wow, 25,000 boards. Yeah, I've done a lot of them. <laughs> I mean, it always starts with a blank. So this has already been cut on the computer. Yeah. Um, it comes from a molded polyurethane blank that they put a piece of wood in for rigidity. But we call it a stringer. Stringer. And, and on a sailboat, it's a keel. On a surfboard, it's a stringer line. And it's the only thing we have that's literally straight that we can measure off. So this is the first tool I use. It's an electric planer. Okay. And I know you're familiar with this from doing woodworking back home. My word. So I use this to trim and true up the wood. Um, I like to have just the side lights when I'm shaping. Okay. So we have the overhead. If you could turn that light off. And why is that? Just so I can see the shadows. You can see the shadows and the whole board. Pat planes back the wooden stringer to the thickness he wants the board to be before using an electric sander on the delicate nose. Having set the level for the board, he sands it back by hand, giving each board its unique shape. You think I can have a go? Of course. Yeah? We're into it. Even a millimetre of sanding can change the performance of a board in the water. You could go ahead and just do longs. There you go. That's perfect. I'll leave the rest to Pat, who hand sands the board's edges or rails exactly as he needs them. This also makes a big difference to how the board performs. I proudly sign every board that I shape, but I know that when I sign my name on her, I've done everything. After signing the board, it's off to another shop to be fiberglassed. It's been amazing to be here at the workshop with a master like yourself. If you can loan me a couple of boards, I'm gonna make a bucket list wish come true. Love to. Thanks, bud. And I know just the mate to hit the waves with. Baz, thanks for calling, mate. Thank <laughs> you.
It's pretty really small, there's not a lot of energy there. I was buggered uh, once I get out, but how good was it to be out there again? The water's nice, the waves are just starting to sit up there. Only Barry Dubois would make his first surf back from cancer treatment on the north shore of Hawaii. Like that, arguably the hardest surf in the world. Oh, and with you as well. It was great, mate. I'm really stoked about today, I really am. Beautiful. How did it feel to be in the water, Barry? Uh, it was a big day for me. Um, as Chris said, not far out of uh, treatment. And uh, to be in such a beautiful place and to call up my mate and we paddle out in the surf together, uh, it was a special day, mate. It, it really was for me. I think there's, there's something spiritual about, about the water, you know. Mm. It, it, it feels so healing, but it just... It just makes you feel great. And, and I know during your treatment, Baz, we, we often talked about getting back in getting the ocean back and, and how important that was and, and a real milestone. And to be there for that was, was something very, very special. A, a very special day.